Yes, Steve. -o. Hi there. Seems recording is on all of the time. Whenever somebody enters, or yeah, I think I think it kicks in by default. Okay. I don't know if that's good or bad. Hey, Kathy. Hi, Doc. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Okay. Hey, Stanley. Morning. I assume it's morning for you, Doug. <laughs> well, I don't know. It's noon, so it's like right on the border. <laughs> oh, I completely did not realize. Yeah. Um, you're, I'm you're on the East Coast. Coast. Yeah, uh, I'm on the East Coast, yeah. Where at? Good evening. Uh, Raleigh. <laughs> Good evening. Very firmly. Good evening. I like that. <laughs> oh, that's true. It's five o'clock. That, oh, yep. So you can have a like drink time. That's exactly right. <laughs> well, uh, let's put it this way. You're not allowed to have a drink until we define source. How's that? And I, would, I would be super happy if that, if that was the case. Yes. Uh, <laughs> no one in this working group is allowed. Thank you. <laughs> Okay. Well, then, then I'm I'm ready to have it defined within the hour. Let's do it. <laughs> yes. Five minutes. <laughs> Unfortunately, I actually need to drop at the at the bottom of the hour for the phone call, so I won't be able to join in the fun. Uh, okay, Sarah, I think is running a few late. I'm a little late. Uh, okay. So tell you what. Um, let me go ahead and share my screen. Just so we're all looking at the same thing. All right. Can you guys see that? Oh, wait. I haven't, yes. I haven't okay. done anything on that document so that um, it doesn't confuse, the, the GitHub doesn't get confused in everything. <laughs> um, so how do you guys want to proceed? Um, I, honestly, while yesterday's conversation was really, really good, I do kind of feel like we could have gone a little faster if we didn't necessarily try to wordsmith every single word and rather try to look at the more broader picture that you were trying to paint there. I agree. Um, so with that in mind, 
I'm wondering if we could just look at three and four and see if people understand the general concept and, and agree with it or think that it's basically off track and then we'll leave, you know, the exact wordsmithing for another time. Yeah, I would, I would prefer that. Yeah. Um, so, um, sorry, I didn't join yesterday's meeting. Um, I post some comments, uh, some suggestions on this um, PR. Um, I think I, I think so. Oh, yeah, it's regarding the yeah, I'm, know, after I'm wondering, the wondering, did were they? I think they were all before number three, correct? Yeah, I guess so. Uh, so, so do you, Kathy? Do you think your 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 comments are? Do did, did they fundamentally change what Clemens was saying, or do you think that they're more wordsmithing? Well, also, I, I suggested some text, but, um, but that's a good question, Doug. Yeah, hey, I think Sarah. you know. Yeah. Go ahead. <laughs> no, Sorry, I go. Saying, I was just saying, hey, Sarah. I didn't Hi. realize you joined. Yeah, so, oh, I'm, I'm, let me just, I'm, I'm just reading this because I hadn't seen them before. Hang on. Hang on. Let me just read that second paragraph. Okay, so uh, for to Kathy's um, comment here, um, for her example one, the event is submitted by the motion detector and the intermediate gateway that does the transformation of the request into um, HTTP um, is the, the gateway is uh, an actor in here, but it is not changing the event per se, and it's not the event producer. It's basically just a translator that's transparent. Um, in the second example, that's two, in, in my view, that's two distinct flows. You have a, you have a um, event that's being triggered by um, the, um, the, camp, the, the motion detector. Uh, the motion detector then goes and triggers something in a cloud platform or, or stores, does something, something in the cloud platform. The cloud platform reacts to that by emitting an event. These are two distinct events in my view. Okay, yeah, I, I think, you know, I think we, uh, I agree with that too. I think Sarah's point is same, right? Um, so I think here, I think the key point is, you know, um, what is meant by semantic meaning change, change of semantic meaning. If we can clearly, you know, define that, that would be good because these are, these two are just examples, right? There are other examples. So if we can define that clearly, then people can't, you know, um, you know, can derive, say, which is a um, producer, which is, yeah, so, so my, then, my you know, people will be on the same page. Yeah, that's yeah, my so point. My, my problem here with, 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 with length is I can turn, I can turn the, uh, the, the, the write-up that I created, like this page, I can early, I easily turn it into 50. I have I have plenty of examples from from every part of this every part of the write up. It's just not clear how much that contributes because we are looking for something that kind of frames the discussion, and we're not making that part of the normative part of the spec. So I'm actually very happy to write uh, you know a series of blog posts that go and and clarify the the intents of cloud events and details for the general public. Um, in, in epic length, but I'm not sure that we, that we need all that detail um, in the discussion that we're having. Yeah, as as yeah. We, so my point is that we... We need to agree, and it looks like you agree with the stance that I'm having, um, and, or that we're having, and um, so that is the consensus that's consensus that's going to be <clears throat> that it's actually uh, already, we have already achieved the purpose of that document. No, I, I think, you know, the point is that, you know, these are just examples. We do not need, uh, my point is that we do not need to give the, you know, um, dive into each example. There will be a lot, right? But yeah. I would like, you know, we, to, we define the semantic change of semantic meaning um, clear uh, in a more yeah. clear way. So now it's, you know, um, I think if we, we can define that. I think, we'll, you there's, know, people, there's, actually, there's no wording in here. There's no wording in, in here which allows semantic to be even changed. Like this is something, this is something where it's pretty clear that an event is originates from place and then gets handled by someone and gets forward by someone. 
but no one anywhere is allowed to change the semantics of that event. So I think, I think, I, I think you guys are actually agreeing. And yes, so, we are. Yeah, so <laughs> Kathy, I wonder if it would be useful if rather than, um, rather than talking about what you'd like to see in terms of changes, could you actually propose some actual text that you want to see in there or, or minor wording changes to, 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 to get the point across? Because I, oh, I, okay. I do think you guys are agreeing. Yeah, okay. I, I think that that's fine. I can try to propose some. Yeah. Uh, I, I think the, the, the key point is, in, you know, is how we define the change of semantics. Like even for HTTP API gateway, right? Different implementation could do differently. Some implementation might not change, you know, the... And uh, what we what we define as semantics, but some uh, implementation will change it quite a lot. So there is a um, so so okay. Anyway, I think my point is that we need to define that. Otherwise, people might um, reach uh, might reach different conclusion about you know which is a producer for some scenarios. Yeah, I, yeah, I, think I do feel like this point is the, been the biggest confusion in our discussions over the past month. And so if anywhere we sh might add a little more narrative to explain that, I think this would be the section. So um, I think Kathy, if you can, you know, I suggested, I, I was the one who used the word semantic. If that word isn't working for you, please just, I love like Doug's suggestion, if you could propose a modification or addition to this section that would clarify it, that would be great. Okay, sure. I'll try, Sarah. Okay. And then you can, you know, maybe later see whether there's a better way to word it or to, to explain it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Kathy. Sure. Mm -hmm. on, on, the, on the other request, uh, a comment from Kathy, mm -hmm. uh, replace, replace applications with platforms, applications, platforms. We actually had, we had the discussion yesterday. And oh. we landed on, we landed on, um, um, we're gonna we're gonna drop effectively as as you see the merger here um, the proposed merger here is is the one where we landed and we were agreeing that platforms are no different really from applications with respect to what we're building here. Okay, so so my only um um my only concern here is you know sometimes you know from a um service scenario right there will be like a service platform which provide you know the service um framework and then there are applications service applications which use the platform. Yeah, we um, talked about that yet, Kathy. We talked about that yesterday, and I don't mm -hmm. want to talk about that again today. Well, I think the point is, is that if it's a confusion in the language, that may be having a clarifying point, yeah, wait, so wait, that future you show up or you don't. Uh, that's not. We're writing a document that's yeah, going no, to be consumed by a lot of uh, people. If we, if we go and, and, and iterate over the same points again and again and again, we don't make progress. So this so, is what we landed with five people. So the, uh, let me just ask a question because Kathy, I wasn't quite sure I understood. Are you saying that? When it talks to consuming events, we need to distinguish between the platform and the application. Yeah, but um, so I, I just feel you know applications, right? People could mean um, uh, usually in the service scenario, application means some software um, and the people develop that will use the service platform, which like you know either is uh, Google Google um, Cloud or like Amazon or, or Microsoft Azure. So that the I mean the you know, we, I think you know at least from um, what we have been discussing we call that service platform and then the the software that's that's built on top of that platform to form a a new application or new service that's called the application service application. So if we are talking about service application, then I, I feel uh, it's not very clear. Um, so what I'm taking I away from all of this, software. Mm -hmm. hey, sorry, Kathy, um, what I'm okay. taking away from all of this is the, the word here, right, for individuals who don't have the context of those of us who've been on the calls, or just take it from the standpoint of just someone who's reading through the spec for the first time, yeah. like this, this might rub someone the wrong way. What I think we're leaning towards is even making it more generic, like events are consumed for the purposes such as, right, like, completely punt on the notion that it's an application, a service, a platform, 
and just say, whoever is consuming the event, it can be anyone, right? That's really what we're getting at here. Yeah, that's good. If we can say that, you know, say just whoever consumed the events. Yeah. Okay. I, I, so, so, so Clemens, would you be okay with that slight wording change? So I've actually proposed a um, change at the very top to say that in this context, we use the term application to be inclusive of custom applications or platforms that host applications. Sure, or and services, then, right? And that's fine. That would also be great, right? Like we're like, it's very a legalese thing to do, right? Which is to say from this point forth, application means any of the following words, right? But oh, uh, that's good too, yeah. That would be fine by my perspective too. I just don't want to see anyone get hung up on, like what we're doing it again, right? We're getting hung up on very specific wordage because it does rub people the wrong way in different contexts. So that was all I was suggesting. Yeah. Okay, I so think, so Sarah, sorry if I didn't read that, um, that read what you just mentioned, but you know, I think that's good enough. If you have some wording say, you know, application could mean, oh, inclusive, okay, service platform, that, oh yeah, that would be good, yeah. Okay, so- Yeah, I just in, added that based on your feedback. Oh, Clemens? okay, I see, okay, yeah. Clemens, are you okay with that kind of change? Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. Okay. All right, so scrolling forward in terms of other edits, I think we got that one. That's from yesterday. Oh yeah, I, I did another, uh, I think Sarah added something and then I added something too. Um, so I think the consuming application is also interested in correlating event instances from multiple event producers, and send them to the same workflow instance. But so that's that's um, so let me let me ask you back. Um, how do you do that today? What's that? How do we do that today? How, how do you do that today? So the, so that's okay. We currently right. So we need some. Um, so this is a scenario like you know, for example, if like there's a burst of events, and then you know that event will trigger many instances, right? Um, if that instance is like a workflow and there are many multiple steps. And then, you know, if the second event comes, then how do we, uh, a burst of second event comes, and many of that events, how do we know which one, which instances that, uh, which workflow instance that new event should be um, sent to? So we need a correlation token there, correlation mechanism there. That's why we need something in the event um, information in the event uh, data um, or attributes metadata to identify, you know, um, that event. Uh, but, that's, but, but so that correlation, that correlation information. Yeah. Where is so that that's what, where, where is that coming mm -hmm. from? Okay, that should be, uh, you know, so, that, okay. So you asked the, where that come from. So for different scenario, right? That correlation token could be different. As we said, you know, I, I gave just one example. The, the, there are other examples. I gave one example in my previous presentation in that, you know, burglary and detection. So that uh, event um, correlation token could be the house address. So if like, you know, the service platform receive uh, a motion detection event or a, a door open event, they're, they're the same event. It's a door open event. But inside that event, that event and information, that event information should carry a, 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 a correlation token, a unique identifier, which will be the, could be the house address. Okay. So we need to know which one is that. That information needs to be in the event. Yeah, so, event. I, so the reason why I'm asking that question is, is whether that correlation information is so generic that it would have to be in the standardized sets of properties. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to postulate that that's not true, that this is the correlation that you're seeking is an, is an application level concern that is specific to your app, where you have a set of events which are emitted from um, multiple related contexts, where you define the, relation, the relationship and then you tell each of these contexts a correlation ID, ID they ought to be using as their sending events, and then they will be using that correlation ID and send that inside of the event payload. So, so okay. So first, I think it's very, um, the, you know, a scenario that involves multiple events 
is very common. It's not like very rare, it's a common scenario. Yes. Okay, so you agree with that, multiple Absolutely. events. Okay, yes. it's common. So that scenario, I think we should consider that. Yeah, no, I agree. And then, okay, so, so pardon? So that's the identifying, 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 selecting the origin context or the producer assigned classification is, is intended to cover this. Um, and that is effectively, these are events which are kind of the same. Um, and it apparently is not telegraphing that right. So, so okay, so first you agree that, you know, uh, uh, a scenario that involves multiple events is common and we should consider that, right? So I give you an example from, from, from um, a, a storage service event. Um, the, the commonality around storage services events are typically around a container. So you have a storage container that is emitting events. You're interested in all the events from that storage container. And then each of these events from the storage container can have a further discriminator, which then tells you what, what exact object inside of that service container just raised you that event. Uh, okay, so, uh, so this is a bit different. So, so you are talking, so all these events are from the storage. So you are using some, uh, some other fields, a column number to distinguish them. Okay, whatever, number, whatever that uh, storage I, ID. So here I'm talking about is multiple events. They're not storage events. For example, a scenario could involve a storage event and another like API gateway event, yeah. or is another no, Okay, okay. So so involve two from two different event sources. Is when I say two different event sources, I mean two different types of event source. Okay. So uh, wait, wait. Uh, can, 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 can I jump in just for a second? I want to make sure I understand something because I think, as, as Sarah was saying in the chat, I think you guys are agreeing, and I think Clemens, you actually might be okay with that text that she's proposing, but you just want to understand whether. Cat yeah, is looking I, for additional attributes to be added yeah, to the exactly. stack. I, I mean, that's, that's what I'm, I'm, that's right. what I'm asking. And, and, I, and, asking. I, and, I, and correct me if I'm wrong here, but Kathy, I believe you're saying you're not looking for additional attributes to the spec. You just want to make sure that we're, gonna, we're not going to do something that precludes your use case. Yes. That's right. Yeah. Okay. I just want to, want to add that use case and how we are going to do it, we can discuss later, you know, okay, use what mechanism right. okay. to so I, so I think So I think we can agree to, to add that one extra bullet and then move Absolutely. on. Okay. Okay. Yeah. okay. So, so that's from yesterday. So I think we're now on to number three. So uh, Clemens, you want to briefly mention or highlight number three? Um, sure. So I'm here I'm introducing the notion of uh, middleware that is um, trans that's effectively transparent to um, uh, producers and consumers. So it plays a mediator role. That's why it's middleware. Um, and it does a few things that the consumers, that mostly consumers are interested in, um, where consumers having, are having requirements. And so I'm, I'm expressing here requirements really that stem from the consumers, but I realize the middleware in that list um, and to enumerate them. So first is management of many concurrent interested consumers for one or multiple classes of origin context of events. So you have um, if consumers and producers requirements in, in, in that sense. Um, so here, a, a producer is creating, is sending a lots of events. It gets a lots, lots of interest from consumers. And instead of having to deal with all of those consumers together um, and, 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 and singly, um, it basically delegates the management of all of these interests of consumers to middleware, which, the, which takes care of that for it. Um, second is um, the consumers, all of these consumers are given the, the, an opportunity to, to be interested in a class of events um, or in a certain context. But then that context itself or the class of events may be a little richer. So there may be a, a desire to go and filter that down further. Um, and so that's a delegating, that's also a task that's being uh, frequently delegated into middleware to go and out of a initial selection that's built, built over categorization um, that you want to go and filter out specific events, very common in pub subsystems. Um, then you might, in some cases, um, you might have a middleware which does transcoding. Um, the example that I gave here is that you, um, an event arrives in, in JSON and so you want to have a deliberative message pack. 
Um, that's something that some middleware middlewares do. Um, Transformation, or you know, for or you get just simply you get compression over um, over the wire. Uh, transformation that changes the event structure, like mapping from proprietary format to cloud events, while preserving the identity and semantic integrity of the event. Also, a very common um, task of middleware to um, you know, give you a um, a semantics uh, preserving transform from one um, schema to the next. Um, you also may get push style delivery to in, in interested consumers. Um, so you give the, you hand out the, the event to the middleware and the middleware then takes care of delivering that out to interested consumers with retries and all the bells and whistles. Um, it might store events for eventual delivery um, if the consumer is currently offline. Um, or um, if uh, there shall be a delay for that delivery, which is not rare. And then um, the middleware may also observe um, the content or event flow for monitoring or diagnostic purposes, basically snoops on that flow and then reports on it. Um, to satisfy these needs, so there's, there's these requirements, um, there's a few things that the middleware now needs, and that is uh, thank you, because I'm actually reading from your screen. <laughs> yeah, sorry, I, just, I, I couldn't read it. Too many comments in there. <laughs> okay. Um, so uh, to satisfy those needs, um, there's a few things in middleware we need. Um, first of all, it needs to have a metadata discriminator, which allows it to credit to you know provide a coarse grain selection of events that uh, consumers can register interest in. So you, if you want to subscribe to a set of events, you need to have a uh, an initial pre-grouping um, if you want to build something that is um, reasonably scalable. That's what I mean with um, um, the classification that's actually motivating the classification. It's also motivating more or less the, the, the context. And then typically if you have context like the example that I gave with, uh, with the room and the building and the, the um, what did I have? Room, floor, building. Um, these are um, real, you know, structured context that um, you will be interested uh, in, depending on what your application is, and you want to go and 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 kind of filter in. Um, but then there is inside of that classification or inside of that broader context that you're selecting and, and getting all the events from. The middleware will then need a further discriminator that allows distinguishing the subject of a particular event for that uh, of the subject of a particular event of that class, which means you're subscribing to events of the storage container, which is the first one, that's the classification or context. But then now a file gets created and you need to know that oh, the file got created, um, but then you also need to know which file was created and that's what I mean here. That's the subject of um, that event. And then you need to have an indicator for the encoding of the event and its data. Um, and um, um, you need to have a, because you want to you know, know that it comes in this application JSON and you want to send it out as, as message pack. So you need to have an indicator for this. And then you also need to have an indicator for the structural layout schema for the event and its data. If you want to do a transform, you need to know what the input schema is. And then you will also declare what the output schema is if you are um, a schema person. Um, um, and then um, whether, and then, and I have another thought point as I, as I had, has, had on the on the other one, on the previous one. Um, whether an event is available for consumption via middleware is really a delegation choice of the producer. So it's 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 in the hands of the producer how it makes its events known. And um, a producer always kind of is in control of saying. I deliver my events in the following way, and I th either you come here, in quotes, um, to wherever the producer sits, or the producer basically points people, um, also via documentation, to a middleware where um, that holds events available on behalf of that producer. Okay, so before we start into the discussions, I actually need to drop. Uh, so I'm going to stop sharing my screen. Clemens, since this is your PR, would you be willing to share your screen so that way you can guide the discussion through it? Um, yes. Hang on. Okay. I can. Um, and 
before I go, I, I do have a request for, for you guys. If, uh, if, if after this call, we don't have significant progress yet on the definition of source, can we set up another call, either continue this one for that long, long people can stay on or set up another call for tomorrow and just paste that information into the normal agenda doc and send that a note or something so people know? Because even, so, even if we can't get agreement today, I'd like to see if we can make more forward progress. So I think this is tremendous forward progress and it will help the conversation of source if the whole working group accepts this PR and that's what we actually decided to do last week. And we scheduled these meetings last week. So I, I don't know whether giving people one day notice that we're going to have that conversation tomorrow is like the best thing, but um, well, well, I'm not, if I'm other not, people want to get together and put together a proposal, that's fine. With me. Well, yeah, I'm not, I'm not, obviously if we come up with, if we have another call tomorrow and actually come up with a, the most spectacular definition of source, it's too soon to vote on it Thursday, but that yeah. doesn't mean we can't make forward progress so people can be, be looking it over in preparation for the following week's call. I just don't want to lose the momentum we have. As long as we actually finish number three and four here, I have yeah. no problem with that. Yeah, yeah, I'm not. Yeah, like I said, if you guys finish this doc or the, this PR and then start have and, and start the discussion on source, I want to keep the momentum going and say let's have another call tomorrow and see how much we can plow through. But I need to drop off. So just to let, like I said, just if you have another, if you set up another call, please just let people know about it so people can join if they if they are able to. Okay, thank you guys. I'll talk to you later. Thanks, Doug. Thank you, Doc. So we're on three. So I had a question about the um, middleware. If you can, I just jump in with the co consumption of the. I like. I like what you said about the. Like the producer decides like how it's going to communicate and you know how its events are going to be made available. I think um, the, there's a nuance there, which is that like if the producer talks to a particular middleware. Um, like in your presentation um, a while back, Clemens, like that middleware could talk to another middleware. So it's not really Absolutely. the producer's concern, all the middlewares that might be in the chain. So yeah. Middleware routes events from producers to consumers or onwards to other, other middleware. That's what I start with. Right. So I think I just, um, maybe that could be clarified a little bit so that it's... it's How? Right. Um, so... So I think that um, basically the, um, I'd like to separate the, like how events get transported, right? From what the event needs, like what the middleware needs to be about the event. So you could say that the middleware says how events, you know, how it communicates with source and consumer and or other middleware a producer determines how it will make its events available. I, I don't understand what you're saying. What? Basically, yeah. I'm, I, um, let me find the, the actual point. It, it's, um, it, Kathy, are you advocating for a statement where like when a direct route from producer to consumer is not available or from producer to destination is not available that the producer can send data like route accordingly via middleware right like so some destination has to be at least acknowledged on the envelope so that middleware can attempt to a route accordingly actually that's not what i'm saying this is sarah by the way um but sorry uh, sarah i'm sorry <laughs> that's all right um it's, it takes a while to understand everybody's voices um so what i was saying is that I think the producer decides how it's going to make its events available. Yes. In some systems, the producer just makes events available and the, you know, any sort of classification might, and filtering or whatever might be done by the middleware, depending on the event system. In some cases, the producer will do filtering on its own. And in any case, the yeah. producer sure. doesn't pick its middleware. I mean, it might, but it, it, it's just responsible for how it produces events. But and so what I'm asking, Clement, is to basically capture a little more of what you said. Yeah. Um, because the document seems to imply that the producer chooses its middleware. My point, is, my point here is, if middleware is in the picture at all, that is covered by Section 3. If the producer doesn't care, then it's not captured by Section 3. Section three. And the, 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 there's a decision point that I'm – and this is the last sentence that, that I read, right, is – 
the producer makes the choice of whether it wants to delegate these ta tasks to middleware or not. But if, they, if, they, if it doesn't go and delegate those to middleware, then they become private concerns of the implementation of the producer that the producer doesn't need to share with anybody, and therefore we don't need to look at them. So the point three is, is, is all about middleware being in the picture already. So uh, many weeks ago, there was some discussion about like a desire for there to be an ecosystem of things, right? And um, so saying that the producer, I mean, I think sure there are some systems where we allow for the producer to have some proprietary contact with some proprietary middleware. Um, I just think that there are folks in the group who would like to see yeah. interchangeable middleware. Yeah, but and that's what this is about. What's your, what's your, I, I don't know what you're contesting. What I'm saying is by saying that the, whether it's events are in line 142, saying, I think we're agreeing on the content and I just want to, it captured in the document. It says, whether it's events are available for consumption via middleware is a delegation choice of the producer. Yes. How, how's, and, and, and that's true, right? If a producer chooses not to use a middleware, you can't get the events of that producer from that middleware. And, and the producer goes and delegates work to the middleware. For instance, distribution of the events. That's, I'm, I'm, not sh I'm not sure how that's false. So I think that, um, I guess I was reading, so one of the things that we've been talking about is creating an ecosystem where you could have one party create a producer, another party create middleware, a third party create a consumer, yeah. and a fourth party assemble all of these into an operational system, right? Yeah. But In which that case, the producer isn't making any choices at all. They're producing no. something in some way that it yeah, but, but the reality, the reality of, 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 of systems is that the producer, if it has events, it has a choice of whether, whether and which middleware it uses. And, and we need to make our specification work such that a producer can go and make an event and can go and dispatch that straight to a webhook of a consumer without having anything in the middle. Yes, and so if then somebody, hang, hang, hang on, if, yes. so, if somebody were creating a producer that communicated with the consumer via webhook, and those were, the producer and consumer were open source software, and that's then by definition over HTTP, because that's what we make webhooks out of, then somebody could put a middleware in between, right, that acts as an observer. Yeah, so it's process. not really the, so basically the producer chooses how it will communicate events, but not, it doesn't actually choose its middleware. No, it does choose its middleware because it will not talk to an unpro untrusted proxy. Does anybody else have yeah. any um, thoughts on this? Yeah, I think Sarah, I, I think Sarah's point is um, from the producer's point of view, it just um, it just knows you know how it's going to um, publicize or emit that event. It's the receiver side, you know, that decides um, whether you know um, it's going to just act as a middleware or act as a consumer. Is that what you mean, Sarah? Yes. The, pro the producer doesn't know who is going to consume that event or how it's going to consume it. Whether it just acts uh, as a middleware or it's the, the real consumer of the event. Okay, so I, I, think, I think if I strike that entire sentence, then we'll be, we'll be happier. Sure. Okay, um, I have a, a question here. Um, Clement, could you scroll up? Um, sure. So for the, yeah. So here we, we talk about, you know, um, the middleware, uh, all this, um, um, I mean, the, either the transcoding, transformation, filtering, right? Um, can we add that, you know, it will not change the semantics of the 
or the semantic integrity of the event. I see that you 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 put that into the transformation, but how how about the the other yeah, the other transcoding by definition only only changes the encoding of the event. So okay, so how about the other filtering? I see some filtering things. Uh, um, so if the filtering, if some semantics was lost, if, um, it, but you, filtering only filtering only selects it only selects the events. Okay. Right. So how about the other like? If, okay. So, so metadata discriminator allows distinguishing the subject of a particular event of that class. That means you 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 either get that event or you don't, but that doesn't touch the semantics at all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. These are fun. Right. Yeah, okay, I, I see. Okay, so transcoding it doesn't so implicitly it does not change, and then filtering it does not change. Okay. No. A yeah. transformation, okay. a transformation, a transform will change the event structure, and that might actually drop data that's efficient, that's essential, and that will change the semantic integrity. Okay, that's fine. Yeah, I just want to make sure <laughs> the middleware does not change the semantic integrity. That that's the whole point. Uh, actually, when I read through these points, uh, I think these are very good, you know, uh, points. When I read through this, I feel the service platform um, can also satisfy all this. What do you think? Uh, abs absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. You can, and that's the point. The point is, the point is, it, it's a, it's a middle. It, ultimately, you have a producer that's a piece of code, and you have a, you have a consumer or a handler, if you will, that's a piece of code. Yeah. That are at the outer edges of this whole thing, right? And then there's, you, you call the consumer is the consumer is the thing that goes and gets the event, and then, and then interprets it, and then ultimately dispatches it into a function. And the producer is the thing that kind of captures the state that's, that's existing in its own system, renders an event, and goes and sends it. And then there's stuff that sits in the middle that makes sure that um, those two parties can go and understand each other and can actually you know, see each other, if you will, so that that event can be routed. And that all of that stuff that sits in the middle is middleware. Yeah, okay. So, um, so uh, are we going to define, so how we position the, some transport in the middle, like some router? Which route the event from the it's from middleware. the that's also middleware. It's middleware. So so our middleware. So the middleware here actually is very, very broad. It could be you know a uh, a transport um, entity like a router, or it could be a service platform which actually does much more than just you know it's, it doesn't do transport. I actually it it does filtering. It does you know some um, um service mesh. You know delegate. Enterprise service a service broker a bus. It can be an API gateway. It can be um, a message broker. It can be an event router. It can be an event ingester. It can be any of those things. I think if we can clarify that, that would be good, you know, because here actually I think you know the middleware. What we want to define here is very broad, can cover actually very different. Um, yes. Entity, entities where, with very different functionality. Um, I, I like what I, I, what I in, in, in standard documents, what I'm trying to avoid is constraining the definition of a role to a particular set of existing artifacts because um, fashions change. Like, like 10 years ago, you would, have, you would have written this as the enterprise service bus does the following thing. And today you might go and write this as you know, in, in, depend, in certain quarters of the industry, you might say an API gateway does the following thing. The reality is this definition of middleware has been stable for the last 20 years. Um, and you could go and apply this to IBM MQ from 25 years ago, and it would still be true. Um, and this will likely also be true in 20 years, but the names of things that are implementing these patterns are all changing because marketing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I, I think I understand that point. I think that's right. I'm just thinking, you know, in order for other people to better understand this, we can just give some examples instead of, you know, people are thinking, you know, oh, because sometimes, you know, when people think about middleware, people think about, you know, router, uh, you know, some intermediate devices, which does not do anything about the, you know, the event, it just uh, transport. Some people could think of that way, but actually, I think here it's not just that, right? I think give some example for clarification does not hurt. 
We're not saying it's just restricted to these examples or these terminologies because they could change in the future, right? I agree. Yeah. I agree with all of you, all the things that, um, with pretty much all the things that you say all the time, uh, because you're asking for more clarification um, and, and more examples. And I think that's, that's great. Um, and we'll have to go and figure out how we, how we satisfy that um, in companion material to the spec so that we can make it clear to everybody um, what we mean with certain things. It's just not that the spec needs to be pretty tight technical document. Um, and what we're trying to achieve is kind of consensus on, on you know, where we're going and ultimately we want to go and speed up things to get to a stable thing. So I think these are parallel efforts to go and write some more verbose material that illustrates more of the use cases. And I can- I so Can I make a suggestion? Can we just file an issue to, yeah. like I'd like to see this proceed, like this pull request go across and write a separate issue to clarify, you know, the the existing set and make sure it's legally, you know, but not limited to, yeah. uh, you know, like sort of thing. Cause you do introduce a really interesting set of use cases when you talk about like an API gateway versus like a message broker, right? Like you have implicitly changed a one-to-one -one versus like a one-to-many mapping of, you know, uh, where the event could conceivably go. Yeah. You also impose things like, well, now is the transport, like, like, like to get very specific, right? If I have Kafka in place, um, is the transport also concerned with ordering, right? Like ultimately I think that ordering should be expressly called out as out of scope, but I yeah. think that is in a different document, right? And, and you get, and you get, if, if you look at API gateway versus Kafka, you also get the uh, deliver ones or be able to replay forever. And there's yeah, right. like delivery guarantees, right? Like at least once at most once, right? Like you can, we can, we can create this matrix, but I think it should be very scoped and specific to middleware. Right. That's why I'm suggesting we write a separate right. issue to like uh, kind of explore the definition and use cases related to middleware, but it should not be done in this context because this should move across and make progress independent. Yeah, I, and I agree. We we can. And, and the question is, I mean, well, well, it's important. Well, it's interesting to explore. Um, I'm not sure how much that exploration is going to drive us towards um, um, the the first goal that we have, and that's kind of the first set of, of core properties that we're all going to lock on. Mm -hmm. So, Clemens, I had a quick question for you. You have, it seems like you've got a couple of levels of discriminator, message discriminator. Uh, one was sort of a coarser level, which would indicate the um, sort of a storage device, and another one which would be finer, indicating that a subject or a file within the storage device. Is that right? Yeah, I have. I think I have. Um, generally, I'm thinking about four four of these discriminators that I have in my head. Uh, the question is: the it sounds to me like the that first one you mentioned that's, that references sort of a storage device. Isn't that the same as the uh, actual source ID that we have already? Yeah so, so, and that's, that actually, yeah, so thank you for raising that question because that's that's a great way to spend the last 15 minutes. Um, so so let me talk about those four since you asked, and I think that's a, that's that's where that equivalence comes from. So the first one is is one where we've been um, there have been discussions about, and that's this this namespace thing, mm -hmm. where um, I think we need to have a way to distinguish between namespaces in the sense of vocabularies. If you have an event that comes from Azure, or you have an event that comes from AWS or an event that comes from the IBM cloud, um, or an event that comes from the Oracle cloud, um, you will have a s specific notion of, you know, what the other fields are structured like. They're gonna have a, a and, and you will not necessarily all want to interpret them as completely opaque fields, but they may in have structure in them. But interpreting that structure, you need to have an anchor for being able to interpret that structure. Um, and having a disambiguator that tells you this is an event that comes from Azure or this is an event that comes from the Oracle Cloud will help you to say, like, if I, if I see an event that's from Azure, I look and I look at the field that we're currently talking about as source, then I know that that's going to be a Azure resource identifier. I just know because that's how we document. It's like this field will always contain that. 
which means I can now start doing clever things with it, but only within the scope of Azure. And Cloud Events gives me the, 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 the certainty that, that the namespace field is actually meaning to be that discriminator for the outbound. And then for all for other, all other cases, right, where I don't want to go and sweep inside and, and be intelligent about the structure, I just take that as a um, um, as a field that I can go and um, you know just act, act on as an opaque string, which is also fine. So that's why I care about namespace. Also, I care about namespace because there might be clashes um, in terms of nomenclature for those um, identifiers. So you may have a you may have a notion of you know what the event type is and the event type might that i define for for um azure might might clash with an event type that is defined in aws and we certainly don't talk to each other um because we're not allowed to um, um and so having that discriminator makes sense to me for that reason so, so that's so the first the, one the so namespace is essentially a top level identifier for the the, the whole context of the the yes. message the event i yeah. mean so, so you, know, you know, the rest of you know, once you have a, an identifier, whether it's Oracle or AWS or all the other fields would be interpreted in the context of that that namespace value. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, that's 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 what I'm. That's effectively what I'm after to say. Um, they, all those events are having their having their 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 meaning and their constraints as cloud events defines them, but they may they may have. The cloud event says, you know, this field is a string, but inside of my, and, and everybody who's processing the cloud event in the standardized way will go and just say, hey, this is a string, I can go and use it. But if I know that that's a string that has been emitted by Azure, I can also go and interpret that string in a particular way. And I think that's fine. And that's the, the power that a namespace, will, a namespace declaration will give us is to say, um, I now know what the, what the structure the substructure effectively of, of the data in those fields is. And, and I can tell you that we will likely, so from, from in Azure, we will likely just have azure.com in that namespace or something like this um, and treat all the events that are emitted by the cloud mostly the same, certainly for everything that comes through event grid. Um, let's say we wanted to have something, you know, so we don't want every device have to be able to have to interpret the events in terms of, say, a Azure namespace value. Can we have also a, a more common um, mechanism, say, you know, have a value for uh, CNCF events or cloud events? Yeah, this is, this gets into, so the thing I want to avoid, the thing I want to help with, want to help with and avoid at the same time is schema standardization. <laughs> um, so, so what we're doing here is we're trying to agree on a schema um, for events um, of a few fields, which is already um, quite the thing. Um, going a step further down and actually start defining what the events per se look like, like what the standard storage event looks like, that's going to be even harder. So um, I think where we're, where we're at right now um, is to, to say, here's an identifier that tells you the context of that event. That's actually pretty good. Um, and and the, namespace, the namespace is primarily there to avoid clashes. So you get a storage event that comes from the Oracle Cloud, and you get a storage event that, looks from the, that comes from, the, from AWS and one from Azure. Three storage events. All of them are about a block being created because that construct ex ex exists everywhere you will want to be able to go to um, the um, um, you want to be able to go to that respective blob account and pull the file out but there will be an event that you need to go and be intelligent about and will help you to be able to tell that this event that you're looking at just came from aws as a first order discriminator so that you can go and then dispatch into the, re the respective code that deals with that Mm-hmm. Right? Yeah, I mean, I think it's the right way to go. Um, I don't, how does everybody else feel about that? That, that? I mean, I think what we're saying here is when we actually get down to um, creating a, uh, an event standard here or specification that we're really opening it up to everybody's individual um, uh, 
uh, that namespace essentially or, or encoding um, as long as we have this uh, namespace identifier within the event itself. You know, so we can in interpret all the fields of the event. So I have a, another uh, question here is, so that uh, if that, you know, the namespace, we know it's either Microsoft or Amazon or whatever, right? Um, but if it is like, in the, I, I'm still thinking about the IoT scenario. It's not like any um, um, well-defined uh, you know, Microsoft or Amazon. Then, you know, what is this classification and what is the subject? You pick, yeah, hang on, we're, we're, I'm, we're, I'm, I'm gonna get there. Oh. So, so we're still at namespace. Namespace is, so namespace is the top order, the top order definition of all the events that you're gonna, that you're gonna admit. And if you, and, and this might be uawe.cn for you or uawe.com for you. Um, and for me, it's Microsoft.com and it's Azure.com, and it effectively describes the, the, the you know a collection of of systems that are emitting emitting events kind of in a in a similar way. It's just so it, it, the primary the primary purpose for that is to avoid clashes. And like if you are subscribing in a solution from X of these systems, and you get events from all of them into the same place, that you are able to go and dispatch them in a way that you can go and and, and deal with them in buckets. That's the primary purpose of the namespace um, discriminator. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, I think there, that's good. Mm -hmm. yeah, so how, go ahead. Go ahead. How about like for if it's IoT device that yeah, you know sends the event through a router and then to an API gateway. That, that, then I, the consumer, uh -huh, go ahead. That has nothing to, so, so the namespace identifier basically just says just says it just does a broad classification of events. It has nothing to do with transport. It has it basically just it's just about how to how to interpret those events and how to how to how to cluster them as you handle them. It's not okay. about where you go. So okay. the fact that there's a, the fact that there's a that there's a domain name in there is ju it's just a name. It's the same thing as with an XML namespace. So in that case, so that namespace will be that uh, IoT device. Um, company, right? Yes, exactly. Oh, I got it. Okay, I see. Yeah, then that, okay. So then the next question is a subject. So now, yes. so now, yeah, so let, oh, let, let me here? I was, I, I was, so I was, okay. I said, I said, so I, I, I said that there were four and I started with the first with the namespace and I, and I want to start with the discussion. Now it comes a group of three. It's the, other, it's the other one. I don't the, understand it, how, what you were talking about, like the first one, related to namespace. Yeah, so I was asked about the discriminators that I see. Right, so you, your first discriminator was usable for classification of events such that consumers can express interest in one or more such classes. That doesn't seem like namespace. I, 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 was, I was asked broadly, and so I tried to explain broadly. So now, so now let's, the, the other three are- Well, I mean, I, actually, I don't, I don't think I, you're- I'm right. confused. I think you're uh, I, I might be in the wrong section of this topic, topic, subject, and event types. Yeah. Topic is topic is. I, I'm sorry. Can, can you just tell me where you, which list? I'm, you're I'm not looking at the document anymore. I'm talking oh. about the of, of what sources. Oh, okay. So we're not. Um, yeah, okay. I have the same question. I, I, I'm pretty confused about what we're talking about, but whatever. So uh, I was asked. Uh, we, we were we were trying to. We, we, I think I thought we were done with that part of the document, and then we're trying to get into a discussion where source what source is. Oh, okay. oh no, actually, um, so Clement, I think I, I have the same confusion as Sarah. So uh, I thought you know you have the namespace. I thought you have the classification. You have the subject, and then we have a uh, next one. So these you say are not related. Yes. And then there's no, no, another. No, they, they are, but they play. So so the requirements, the 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 the, the document that we have here, uh -huh. the requirements. That's right. They are actually already already partially materialized in the document that we have in the course in the core properties that I would like to get to to make some progress on. So that's like we have so I'm gonna I'm gonna go and 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 and, and tidy this up this part, but that's already pushing for some properties. And, and based on the discussion that was that we had just so far, it looks like a few people were following 
that we were talking about the namespace property that's defined in the document. Okay. Yeah, so so maybe, I, let, let me ask, my, go ahead. Sorry, Sorry, it's um, two of. I'm not sure that I completely, I may totally agree with you, Clemens, or I may kind of disagree, and I had a whole bunch of questions about namespace. So I'm, not, I'm, I'm completely in support of there being a namespace field, but depending on how it's interpreted, I might not want that definition for it. Okay. But it, it is nine o'clock. It, I have a meeting in two minutes. Did you because, want to because of that? Because of that, we should have another call because I think we need to get to a point where we can have, where we can have a discussion yeah. about source type, source ID, and source, which I believe should be folded into two fields and should be aligned with. Okay, okay. so can we, can, we, can we talk the about not the definition of source, but the time for the next meeting and yeah. um, what will happen between now and then so that we can make sure that people are aware of it? Yeah, so how about we do that tomorrow? Yeah, maybe right. we schedule a tomorrow, meeting tomorrow. So now, how about nine o'clock? <laughs> so tomorrow, Is eight o'clock? Right, same time tomorrow? Nine. Nine o'clock tomorrow would be good for me, thank yeah, you. Yeah, nine o'clock would be good to me too. And then, Clemens, will you be able to resolve all the comments in the doc today? I will do that, to, not today, but I will be able to go and do that tomorrow morning, my time, which means... Okay, ready. if you can do that before the call tomorrow, I think that would help people if they are coming new to the conversation tomorrow. Yes, I will do that. Okay. Super. Great. Okay. Thank you, yeah. Clemens. Good discussion. Right. Yeah. Thank you, yeah, Clement, I would like you to, uh, if in tomorrow, like what's uh, um, the namespace and the, you know, this classification subject, or this, how they relate to each other, so we can have a better picture, and then we can know whether, you know, yeah, we are in sync or not. For the subject, for the subject, you can look at the PR that I have for... Yeah, so it's not very clear. Uh, also, the, what's the relation between namespace and the, what's that, and the classification? Yeah. And the subject. Yeah. Look at look at um, PR ninety five. Yeah. If you can put into the same document, that would be good because the thing is here we are talking about the classification and then subject, right? But then we were discussing the namespace. Looks like namespace is a first level and classification is second level. Is that what you have in mind? Yeah. Go go look at look, look at PR ninety five and then look at um, issue one twelve. <sighs> <laughs> so issue 112 actually lays this out in epic length. Um, what I mean with um, and what 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 topic is and what subject is and why they exist and all those things. That's a that's a multi-page write-up that I did just for the clar clarification and also cite prior art on how a subject is being used in SNS and in Grand Grid and GCM and FCM and Kafka and JMS and NQ and NQTT and NQP and all those things. So look at issue 112. 112. Okay, I'll take a look. I'll try to take a look. Yeah, I, I just want to make sure what we cover, uh, whatever we hear. I'm not, uh, we cover, you know, the correlation um, token, which we talk about, because that's, I think, you know. Um, yes, and, and I think you will find your correlation token in that right now. Look at issue 112. Okay, uh, let me take a look at that. Okay. Okay, good. Thank you very much. So let's tomorrow, yeah. 9 o'clock. Okay. Is that right? Um,